Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to begin our study this morning. Before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful again that we can come together to open your word, to receive light and direction in our lives. We ask, Lord, that the things that we study it can benefit not just us, but those around us, that we can have a transformation of character, that we can follow and serve you. We pray for each person, Lord. You know the struggles that they face and um, the challenges that exist in this world of sin and suffering. And you know our sins, you know the deep secrets of the heart, and the things that we don't want to look at about ourselves that we have to address. We pray for this movement. We pray, Lord, that your spirit can do a work. And we pray for the camp meeting coming up in July. We ask, Lord, that um, you can continue to lead and, um, and provide for those uh, planning to come. As we open your word, Lord, as we look at the book of Judges again, we know, Lord, that there is light there that we need to pay attention to. And so we ask that you can give us a clear understanding, that you can enlighten our eyes, and that we can receive things out of your word um, that can be shared with others. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning again. Um, so what we were doing yesterday, it was somewhat of a review we were going through how these lines were structured, and how, it, how we would look at um, these lines in relation to the other lines. And we addressed the idea of the death of Gideon as being this way, Mark. We dealt with uh, um, the ephod, and, but we never really um, looked at the verses themselves to see what symbols are there. Now, the one thing that we, we addressed is that the death of Gideon uh, ends a line, but it also begins the other line. That is, it, it's a preamble in some ways to um, Abimelech, right? Because it's going to talk about the 70 sons. It's going to talk about Abimelech, of course, who's the son uh, of Gideon through this concubine. And, um, and then... Uh, it's going to talk about uh, their departure from God. And, of course, we know that the line of Abimelech uh, in, in, in our study, that Abimelech fits in um, It fits in with the story of Jotham, right? So that Abimelech, in a sense, he's not an enemy. He's actually the first king uh and but it's going to be the message of jotham and and so we have to try to address how that that works i mean we have before but i think that there are some things that we have to pay attention to uh, that we might not have noticed previously um so that is in the line of the judges we don't have abimelech as any of the judges some people might argue in a sense that he kind of is a judge. Um, that is, he's, he's ruling, but he's not really a judge because he's not opposing their enemies. He's really, it's an internal opposition that occurs. And so Gideon is this zoom in to 11-9, November 9th. And... Uh, Tola and Jair later, that's going to be the zoom into uh, July 18, 2020 on these lines. Each of these lines can can share, um, when we zoom into a waymark, it can have waymarks in that line that are part of the waymarks on the line above. But then we, we have uh, Jotham here that is going to be representative of Samuel Snow's letters. And... Um, so there's, there's a bunch of things there that I still am, am puzzled about. 
um, that relate to what we talked about yesterday that we're going to have to go over and make sure that we understand it clearly. <clears throat> so when we're dealing with the death of Gideon, it's going to be connected to um, the message of Abimelech and thus the meth message of Joseph, right? Now, as a waymark, so we know that the line of the judges goes from September 11th to January 11th, 2023. Um, yet, we have in each of these lines, we often go past January 11th, we go all the way up to April 5th, 2030, and sometimes even a little bit beyond that, uh, to the eighth day of the eighth month on the biblical or on the our calendar. So I guess it's technically the 10th day, but it's October 8th, which is the 10th day of the seventh month on the biblical calendar in 2030. So we, we reach across all of this, um, this span of time all the way up to 2030. We don't know what that means. We just know that that's what the lines uh, show us. Um, so before we get into that, though, we have to address uh, Gideon's line. So in, um, so we have the, the line of Jeroboam, and, and that is the verses that address Jeroboam are then going to be part of this line. Um, the death of Gideon we have is April 5th, 2030. Some of the things we know that are there is the 40 years and uh, some other symbols. But again, I don't know if we need to draw these lines out. We don't need to draw the line of the death of Gideon or Gideon's ephod. We just have them as waymarks at the present time. But there are lines there. I, I just don't think that we know enough to draw out those lines. <clears throat> so when we address this line of Gideon, how it differs somewhat from the line of uh, Jeroboam. And when we look at the waymarks that are here, these waymarks are going to include uh, the 100 days of prayer um, and also the 10 days of prayer. It's going to include, um, just like uh, the line of Jeroboam had January 11th to 12th, which represents the first day of the 10th month, because from the end of Colin's prediction to April 5th, 2030 is uh, 88 lunar months. And 88 lunar months is um, uh, 2,640 days. So we have that symbol as well. And so we take the 88 days from the story of Ezra from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month. We take those 88 days and we have them as 88 months. So symbolically, January 11th, the end of it marks the first day of the 10th month. And then in the line of Gideon, we also have the first day of the 10th month. That's December 25th, 2022, which on the biblical calendar is the first day of the 10th month. And we know that uh, December 25th, 2021, so you've got these two December 25ths. December 25th, 2021 is the 20th day of the ninth month. So this fits in with the idea that you have the 20th day of the ninth month, they have this call to repentance, and that's going to commence on the first day of the 10th month. And then that's going to continue uh, to uh, the first day of the first month. So we just have these different ways in which we connect to April 5th, 2030, and we connect to the story of Ezra uh, chapter 10. Now, one of the things we're doing when we're, we're going through this, because we're going through it for the third time, is that we're trying to add the detail or the information regarding the symbols, so that when we put together the notes for the camp meeting in July, uh, we'll have that information here, some of the, the symbols or calculations that we've done, and also what these dates represent are clearly marked. So both the line of Jeroboam and the line of Gideon, as you can see when I switch between them, they both have the 777 days. Now, in the line of Gideon, um, 
and the line of Jerabail. We're going to have July 18th, but it's going to be a different way mark. That is in, in this line, we have a second angel arrive on July 18th, where it's July 19th in the line of Jerabail. And the reason that is has to do with what the darkness is in this particular line and what the messages are and how they, what work it is they're accomplishing. And that's given from uh, the scriptures, what the scriptures is telling us and where we place this upon the line. So all these different relationships um, have to be understood. So let's start with um, uh, 11, 9, 2019. So we know we have that way mark there. Uh, what is the darkness? So, so we have 11 night. We know that's going to be the separation from Parminder's movement that happens with the story of Sisera. So this isn't particularly addressing Parminder's movement, but it is because the darkness is part of that. And re remember that Gideon, this story is a story about uh, um, the Midianites. Midian means strife. So we know that there's this strife that happens there that Gideon is in response to. So what is the darkness? How would we define the darkness here in this line of Gideon? Based upon these way marks that we have, and how did we get these way marks? We're going to look at that. Now, when we did these lines and we looked at, at judges, we know that this Midianite oppression here in chapter six um, is that they were delivered into the hand of Midian seven years, right? So there's this Midianite impression. There's a prophet that comes this prophet says that they're going to be delivered. And then this angel of the Lord comes to Gideon. And we use this as the time of the end. That is this chapter 6 verse 11 marks the time of the end. And, and so we did that with the other line. Uh, would, we do, would we use this symbol again? Would we say that this is the time of the end? That this is 9-11 and 11-9. Are we just going to use the same, because we have the same, the same period of time, are we going to have the same time of the end? And if we have the same time of the end, how do we distinguish the, the darkness in the line of Gideon compared to the line of uh, Jeroboam? Anybody have any ideas or remember what we talked about in the past? Was this just arbitrary? We were just guessing and just putting things on a line and or were we using something here uh, to help us understand this? You guys need to discuss things. <clears throat> Can we just take 611 and say it's the time of the end based upon that symbol? Or do we need, because we've already made it the time of the end for other lines, based the other line, the line of Jeroboam. Okay, so we have an angel coming down, right? The angel of the Lord came down, so we know that that's a symbol for 911. Right. It's also a symbol for 11.9 because 9 and 11 and 11.9 are the same way mark. And we talked about that yesterday. And so just like with the line of Jeroboam, we're going to have the same time at the end. But because we have a different message, 
even though it's going to run parallel with the message of Jeroboam, um, it's still going to have the same time at the end, but it's going to have a different darkness. So a different darkness is going to be addressed, and we have to figure out how we can do that, why we can take the same story and create two different lines that run parallel with each other. Now we know at 11.9, we're going to have uh, a message that is presented to this movement. And that message is going to be uh, the message of the 273. Now, is there a problem that there is are different messages that are introduced at the same way, Mark? Do we have any any way of um, addressing that? So if you look at this line, <clears throat> the line of Gideon, I'm saying that um, we have a time of the end here. And, and the thing that, one of the things that is introduced on November 9th is I'm at the School of the Prophets and I do a presentation on the 273. That is, it's going to come from um, this Mayan calendar. It's going to be connected to this Mayan calendar in the 777 structure. And from that structure, I'm going to learn that July 18th is possibly going to be a failed prediction. But I don't know that on November 9th. I'm just, I just, just previous to that, I did this study in October uh, showing this 777 structure. Um, well, no, I don't show the 777 structure yet, but what I get is I get the beginning of that, which Jeff's understanding is, is later going to give me an understanding of the 777 structure. But I have the beginning of that. That is, I'm examining uh, the prophecy of Revelation 9 and understanding uh, the 11,900 days and um, uh, expanding that in its connection with the Mayan calendar. So I'm not going to go into the details of that. But in doing that, I come up with this March 27th symbol, the 273. And we're going to say there's an increase of knowledge in March 27th, 2020 is going to be um, marked. And now we know that this is addressing the pandemic. That is the church, the Seventh-day Adventist church announces that they're going to begin 100 days of prayer. That's 144,000 minutes. So they're going to start um, March 27th and at the beginning of March 27th, and that's going to include all the way to the end of July 4th, 2020. So it's 144,000 uh, minutes or 100 inclusive days. So it's not a cardinal count. And that's going to end at the end of July 4th to be to the beginning of July 18th is 13 days, 18,720 minutes. So if we're take if this is correct, if we're saying that the 273 introduced on November 9th is a message, when we get to March 27th, we have this 100 days of prayer that's going to begin and it's going to end on July 4th. And we're then going to have these 13 days that go to July 18th. Um, that's going to be the second message, but we're going to look at those spans of time. So we have from November 9th to March 27th, 2020. So no, November 9th, 2019 to March 27th, 2020. And then we have the 100 days of prayer, and then we have July 4th, and then we have 13 days. So what is this symbolizing? <clears throat> we 
you, you may not recognize it because at the time when we did this, we didn't, when we first understood this, these spans of time, there's something that we didn't know about or didn't understand. So the period that the manna falls, how many, how many days is it that the manna, from when the manna first falls to when the manna ceases to fall? Or to the last day it falls, the, from the first day it falls to the last day it falls, um, an inclusive count, how many days is it? Something like 14,500 um, 87 or 88. Yeah, it's 87. If you just count from when it, the first day it fell and you, you count how many days it fell and not, you know, you're not taking out the Sabbaths. You're just saying that span of time, right? So you're not, because it's, it's not going to fall on the Sabbath. We're not taking the Sabbaths out of there. But if you count that, that period of time, it's 144,087, uh, 104, 14,587 days, which is a hundred or um, it's one, four, four, zero, zero plus one, eight, seven. Right. So can we see that that's symbolically represented here? That we have a symbol of 144,000, one, four, four, zero, zero plus one, eight, seven days to get 14,000. Uh, 587 days and that that that's symbolically represented in these two spans of time together based on the minutes so it's it's not going to be an equal span of time or anything we just have these two symbols together so if that's true um what is what does the period of the falling of the manna represent? Why did they get fed with manna for forty years in the wilderness? Well, there was a. Um... An additional 30 plus years because of rebellion. Right. So they've been in the wilderness for a bit, and then they're going to have this extended to be 40 years. Right. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, all the commandments which I command thee this day, thou shalt observe to do, that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep my his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So this manna represents being fed by God in the wilderness. Now, of course, in this line, we, this isn't the wilderness, um, at least not in this line, though I think that, that, that it is in some other lines. <clears throat> but we can see that this, this symbol here of the 144,000 and July 18 go together. Now we know that Jesus went into the wilderness to, to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And at the end of that 40 days and 40 nights, Satan's going to come to him and says, if thou be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. But Jesus quotes Deuteronomy uh, chapter 8, verse 3, right? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Right? So he's going to quote that. Now, why does he quote it?
What is the parallel? Because if Jesus is quoting this, this verse in Deuteronomy, dealing with the manna, and we know that, that Jesus is the bread that came down from heaven as well, but, but he's quoting it. Why is he quoting it? What is it? What is it he knows, and what is he saying to 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 Satan in quoting this verse? The putting reliance upon God, living off His words. Okay. Just seeking the physical things of this life. Okay, so you know, the most direct thing we can we can see is that we don't trust in the things that are seen, right? We trust in God's word. Right? Because things can appear a certain way. Satan can make things appear a certain way, and he does with Christ. He tries to um, make Christ see, and he actually does, because Jesus sees that he's that what Satan is saying from appearances is true. He doesn't appear to be the Son of God. It appears he could be, you know, some imposter, or he could be self-deluded, or something like that, right? That, that's the way it appears to him. Now, Satan is going to try to get him to doubt who he is. But remember, his father said 40 days before, what did his father say 40 days before? He heard a voice from heaven saying what? Thou art my beloved son. Yeah. Thou art my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased, right? So, so Jesus is going to live by the word of God, not by what he sees in himself. Now, when we look at this, this, this line, then, if we're going to take just those symbols, we have symbols of the Levites. We have July 4th, which is a symbol in and of itself. Um, and then we have these 13 days as well, the, the July 18, 2020 symbol, 18720 minutes. Um, so this is uh, something that God has given us. This line has been given to us to feed us to help us to trust in God's word rather than in how things appear. So when we get to July 18, if that work is being done in our lives, then we, we will be able to pass the test of July 18. Because if our trust is based upon God's word and not upon, you know, what we see, not upon our own feelings, not upon following man, um, not upon our own, you know, our, our profession of July 18th, if it's based upon human pride or some other foundation, uh, then when we get to July 18th, we're not going to be able to pass that test, the failure of that prediction uh, would demonstrate that we, we don't have the faith to pass that test. Now, Christ, of course, is giving us this light. He's going to give us, on March 27th, we're going to recognize this 100 days of prayer because we're going to know about it. Uh, but we don't know that this 100 days of prayer is going to end on July 4th. We know that. But we don't know that when it ends, it starts a period of 187 days. So we have the 187 there represented in two different ways. 
we have it from July 4th to July 18th in the 18,720 minutes, but we also have 187 days. Now, the thing about July 4th as a symbol, it does represent the first day of the first month to the United States. It's obviously not the start of the year, but as a symbol, it represents the start of the United States. And we know that it's going to bring us to the 10 days of prayer, which has already been set up. So when they set up this 100 days of prayer, it's, it's something that's done impromptu. It's just done because of this pandemic. Everybody recognizes this pandemic. And so the church decides to have 100 days of prayer. They're obviously not considering it's going to end on July 4th. And when it ends, you know, there's going to be 187 days to this 10 days of prayer that we already set up. Now, the 10 days of prayer goes January 6th to January 16th. It's a cardinal count. It's, so it'd be technically 11 days um, where, where the 100 days of prayer is really 99 days as a cardinal count. So, um, so you understand what I'm saying here. This, this 10 days of prayer is 10 cardinal days, but 11 days. But that's not the case with the 100 days. It is a uh, cardinal count of 99 days. But as an inclusive count, it's 100 days. Okay? Um, so we have this 187 days. Now, that 187 days ends on January 6th, and that, of course, is the siege of Washington, D.C., which nobody foresaw. And But that's going to be following a December 25th, 2020. Now, December 25th, 2020, is it's going to be 13 days to January 6th, 2021. So again, we have the 18,720 minutes. But December 25th, 2020 is the bombing of of Nashville, right? So it becomes a very significant way mark. And the fact that it's 13 days to January 6th is you know, extremely profound in the context of this structure. Okay, so... Um, now, then we have, of course, the 10 days ends on January 16th, and we know January 16th is, um, uh, it's going to be 343 days to December 25th, 2021. So I could probably put that in there. Um, so I'm counting from the end of January 16th. So it, it, not from January 6th. So here I just put 343 days, right? Now the significance of there, of this, is, is what? Do this just to be clear. So, what's the significance of that? Do it this way, more. Put this down here. Just going to put that there. So you got obviously the 10 days there. So we have different divisions of 777 days that are um, sort of mirror ways of looking at these. These So 525 and 252. So in this case, we have... Uh, 343 and 434. Just, uh... So what's the significance of this?
Okay, so seven times seven times seven is going to be three forty three. Three forty three, yeah. And the four thirty four, where's that come from? If you look at the 70 weeks prophecy, 434 is 62 weeks, right? So in this 777 structure, because before we even had this 777 structure, we had the two Lamech study. That is, we know that one Lamech lived 777 years, and the other Lamech, a descendant of Cain, he had the 70 times seven curse placed upon anybody who would seek revenge for him um, committing manslaughter is how I understand it now. Um, and so he says, if Cain for committing murder, if there's gonna be a curse, seven times curse upon Cain, uh, then if somebody was to seek revenge for the manslaughter, then um, there should be a 70 times seven curse upon him anybody who seeks revenge against me, right? So this 70 times seven, of course, how often shall I be get, forgive my brother seven times? Jesus says unto 70 times seven, right? And we know that's the 70 weeks. And so that 70 week study is connected to this 777 seven, seven, because if you take the, the first uh, 49 years and the seven years, this 49 is seven weeks, so seven times seven, and then the week at the end and you multiply them together, you get 343. And if you add that to the 62 weeks, uh, you get um, four, uh, the 434, you get 777. So even before we knew about 777 days, we had this 434 and this 343. And so when Stephen and Odilio, I can't remember which one learned, figured out which parts, but when they, they found the 777 structure and they had the 252. I know Stephen had recognized that. And then they put the 525 together that um, this, this gave us this, this idea of this type of mirror that is 434 mirrors 343 um, that we could divide these periods of time into. And so, so when we had January 16th, the end of the 100 days of prayer being 343 days to the end of our line, we have this natural division of this 777 days. So that should be um, should be fairly clear to people how that that's working. Now, what were the what were the 10 days again? Of the 10 days of prayer? Well, 10 days of prayer. Yeah, so the Seventh-day Adventist Church, every year at the beginning of January, they have 10 days of prayer. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. they had – all I know is about 327. <laughs> I thing I knew about. Okay. They have in prayer. Yeah, so I guess they have this. I mean, I never knew about it really, but there's this 10 days of prayer, and it's part of their regular uh, program. So that 10 days of prayer happened to start on January 6th, the day of the siege. So they didn't have the 10 days of prayer because of the siege. It was already uh, predetermined they were going to have this 10 days of prayer. That it happened to fit with the siege allows us to take this structure and put it together. Because they had the, the 100 days of prayer, and then, and then they had the 10 days of prayer with the 187 days in between. And so that's why we can mark January 16th. And this... It was hung from Vietnam. He's the one who he had actually figured this out. I mean, he had divided it and he thought maybe something's going to happen in connection with January 16th. But he didn't really say anything about it until after. But uh, he had, you know, he said he was a little bit scared to say, say something about January 16th until um, I noted it. Um, and then so so we have that that natural division of the 777 days. <clears throat> so 
So if we're looking at this line and we're trying to figure out what it's what it's about, I mean, we know we have these dates, we have these way marks, but we have to say that the story of Gideon is giving us these way marks, right? I mean, we're saying this is Gideon. We draw out this line. We, we put these dates. We say it's these way marks, the first angel arriving, it's formalization and empowerment. We have these spans of time but do we find this in the story of Gideon because we're saying that the story of Gideon is giving us this now we can see the time of the end in the story of Gideon we can see this 611 is giving us this symbol that we can mark as 9-11 by flipping it upside down and then flipping it left to right. And if we do that, we'll, we'll get from 6-11, we get 11-9. Okay, so, I mean, that seems fine. So now we have to figure we have to try to address this. Okay, just hang on. I'm trying to share this, and it's not sharing. Okay. <clears throat> so, what what are the the other symbols here that we can we can use? So this angel of the Lord sat under the oak, which was an Oprah. Okay, so six times 11 equals 666, or equals 66. And uh, this verse in, in um, Psalm 119, so in, in Palmoni dot. It's not working. And your palmoni.org is not working here. <laughs> we tested it early. He did some changes to it. Let me see if I can. You might have to type in the URL. Is it After what? there's a slight change in the URL? So you just need to type so what in is, what is the Uh it doesn't have the web in front of it anymore. Oh, okay. So that's so I just put palmonai.org with no web in front of it. Okay. And he has the Bible indexer on there. Um and if we go to Judges chapter 6, verse 11. So what are you trying to tell me about this verse? In the, in the chat there, what are you saying? Uh, the verse within the Bible is 6666. Okay. Um, This verse in Judges 6, okay, so I have to go. Judges 6, verse 11. Okay, I have the Bible verse 5961. Am I doing something wrong? For, for 611, you do? Yep. I think so. Nope, I'm in the wrong place. Pardon me. I was in Joshua. <laughs> okay, Judges chapter 6. There we go. There we go. Um. Yes, so that's the verse number 6666. So I'll just show people here. So 
So when we look at this, you can see this is Judges 6.11, and it shows the verse, and then it says it's the reverse verse. Uh, 30, Bible verse 666, you can see right there. So it's obviously the 11th verse, and it's the, so that's it's the 30th reverse it's verse. Be, it starts from the beginning of, of uh, the Bible. Bible, okay. So from the beginning of the Bible, this verse <laughs> is 6666, right? It's the 6,666 verse. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is a nice tool. Aran's going to show us this uh, in July at the camp meeting. He's going to go through and show how to use this and some of the things that he's found about um, this uh, um, Bible indexer. This is something you could, could download a website or something with this. Huh? Uh, well, yeah, it's at the palmoni.org uh, website. So if you go to palmoni.org, um, it'll show you these different resources. But, okay. but this is pretty significant. Now, the 6666 shows up in uh, these spans of time because uh, from the day that Dwight's born to Iran's birth is 6,666 days, correct, Iran? Yep. Yeah. And then... Um, I know where another four six is, but it's it's in it's in Texas. Oh yeah, and then between me and Dwight is six times six times six times six days. That's the number of days between mine and Dwight's birthday. So it's kind of an interesting uh, coincidence, right? So anyway. The point is, we have this verse. It has these symbols attached to it. Um, so it has 11.9, but it also has this 6666, which is, of course, just you know 666 in, as a symbol. And plus 6 times 11 is 66. And we have a, an angel coming down, right? Now, what about the oak? What's the significance of this oak? That could be an elm, an oak, or a teal tree, right? Uh, nomenclature is, isn't always very exact when you're dealing with ancient languages. But but this this shows up as a symbol, right? So what is the symbol with this oak? So the word oak is Ella. It's a terebinth tree, they say here. Teal tree, terebinth tree, oak tree, different sort of uh, hardwood trees. It's also the valley where David killed Goliath is called the Valley of Elah or the Valley of the Terebinth tree. But we have it first mentioned in Genesis 35, four. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and, in their, and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak, which was by Shechem. Now, of course, this oak here um, is in Oprah, right? So it's not Shechem. But we know that the first time a tree is mentioned is in Shechem. And where's Shechem? Right, so you can see there's the verse. <clears throat> so what's the significance of Shechem? Even though this isn't Shechem, this is Oprah, but we have this oak. So the first time it's mentioned, an oak tree is mentioned, is in Shechem. So what does what is Shechem? Uh, Shechem was the city that Jacob first came in. When he came to the promised land, he first came to Shechem. Uh, right. it was now, one, of the cities, one of the cities of refuge, also called Sychar in the time of Christ. Yeah, Sychar, and yeah, so it has different names. But we know also it's uh, the place where the um, 
uh, we have uh, Elon and Derizim, right? Yes. Okay. So we have the blessings and the curses. So it, it becomes a symbol for the 2520. It, in, in that sense, right? So, so we can see that this angel of the Lord coming and sitting under this oak tree, right? This terebinth tree or teal tree or whatever it is. It, it becomes this symbol. And we can see that that would relate to uh, the 2520, right? Which is a huge part of this me message. So it would relate to chronology and so forth. And we can see um, that this November 9th date is connected to an understanding of chronology. That's how we arrived at it, or especially confirmed it. <clears throat> so, so this is going to be the call of Gideon, right? So it's going to start there. Um, and there's a lot that happens here. We're going to have... Um, uh, you know, this discussion that goes on, he's going to make this offering, right? He, these, these cakes and made out of flour, and he's going to have this kid, right? And he's going to have this broth, and he's going to put it under the oak. He's going to present it, and the angel of the God, God the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. And then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of his staff, which was in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up a fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now, if we looked at this symbol prior to July 18, how did we understand what was happening here in this story of Gideon? Because prior to July 18th, we take the story of Gideon and apply it to July 18th. Jeff does, right? So what did we see in this offering? What did we see in this story? Did we see symbols of the destruction of Nashville? Yeah, you're going to see um, 1 Kings 13, verse 14, Angela points this to. Right. So you're going to see these, these oak trees show up again and again as a symbol. Now, when we looked at this before in the line of Abimelech, we're going to take 621 and 622 and make that June 21 and June 22, right? But we're not going to do that with this line. That is, we're not going to put those dates there. The dates that we're going to put are March 27, 2020, as the formalization of the message. So how are we going to find that? in this line what is it that we're going to look to to say well the start of that hundred days of prayer which was related to the pandemic we're going to take that as the formalization of the message now we're saying the message is the message of the 273 well how do we even get this out of out of this story so so this part here we're not going to use in this line of Gideon, right? We're not. We're not going to. We're not going to take the symbols right from here. We're going to take another symbol, and that is, we're going to focus not so much upon this first story about what happens in the line of Gideon, because this is going to address, you know, when he gets his name Jeroboam and so forth. But we're going to focus upon the three hundred men, right? So when we take March 27th, we're going to take, we're, start, we're just going to jump to Judges chapter 7. 
Now, that means that we're looking at uh, November 9th as this separating line. Right? That, that's the close of probation for the Omega, right? They close their probation symbolically on, on that date. So they had this period of time. Now, technically, Jeff said they had a week. They had seven more days. So that is to November uh, 15th, counting November 9th. Ninth is the first day. And that's what he said, you know, either on November 9th or just prior to, I can't remember exactly where. It could have been the next day even, uh, or the day after that. But he talks about this, this, this period of time that they have to repent. Now, so when we're going to look at this story here, we're going to look at the separation of this this group so we're going to say that this is what this line is initially about and we know, know that i present the 273 on november 9th but it's going to be empowered and, and we're saying that that's going to be march 27th 2020 not the march 27th 2021 but march 27th 2020 because that's where the 100 days of prayer begin. And we know that's the center of um, a structure of March 27th, March 27th, 2019, and March 27th, 2021. March 27th, 2019 is exactly in the middle between uh, October 13th, 2018, and September 7th, 2019. And so I'd marked March 27th, 2019. And we already had March 27th, 2021. So now we have March 27, 2020. And we have this group separated out. So we're going to say that the 300 is related to March 27 as a symbol. So how do we do that? Okay, so what is numbers, numbers three in Acts 27? How's that related to March 27? And how does that relate us to Gideon chapter seven? Okay, so there's the number of Levites that are, are counted, and we end up with this number of 273. So that is, there's 22,000 um, 273 firstborn of the children of Israel. And, and then you're going to have um, the counting of all of the children of the, of the Levites from a month old and upward, right? And you're going to get 22,300. Um, but they're going to take the 300 out. And when they do the calculation, there's going to say there's 273 different. And people don't really know why they don't count 300 of, because they give a count that if you add them up, uh, that it's going uh, to be 22,300, but they just take 22,000 to do the math. And nobody knows why. But we have 300 there and 273 in numbers three. And then in Acts 27, there's 276 people on the boat. But three of them are Christians, right? And they're all going to be saved. So we take the three to represent the priests and the 273 non-Christians to represent the Levites. And Ellen White says, how many were saved on the boat? Doesn't she say all? She says 300. Okay. Okay. So obviously she's rounding up. But, so can we see that 300 in the story of Gideon represents the 273? Agreed. Okay. So, so when we have March 27th, 
We're saying that there's a message that's given on November 9th. Now that message relates to the number 273. But, but there's more to that message than just that. That message is going to lead to the idea that July 18, 2020 is going to be a failed prediction. But also there's a number of other things happening. Um, Cause Stephen and Adelia and I are there at, in Arkansas at the school of the prophets at that time on November 9th. And um, I believe it was Friday night. Jeff sent an email to us and the email um, had this study on Acts 27. Um, that was written in a very pretentious manner. And had some interesting ideas. I have no idea who wrote it. Um, but Jeff wanted us to look at it because Jeff always wanted us to look at things that were sent to him uh, that he thought we might be able to glean something from them. Um, and and the, a lot of the ideas the guy had was wrong. And, and we have actually looked at his paper before um, uh, in studying uh, that. <clears throat> That is Acts 27. So, but there's this message. There's this message about the close of probation and about what's going to happen. So there's this discussion regarding this. Um, Jeff's, Jeff's ideas of, of, you know, he knew that beforehand that their prediction was going to fail. That is the prediction of Tess and uh, Parminder. But now he's picked up this July 18 prediction. We have the seeds here of the fact that this prediction is going to fail. Now, March 27th, when we have this 100 days of prayer begin, um, there is um, a lot more going on here. I don't know, because Jeff is also um, doing presentations regarding um, at that time, he's he's already recognized um, the January 11th, um, 2020. And uh, I'm trying to remember, because we went through this before, and I don't remember the date of his presentations here. Um, but if you go to... Um, the School of the Prophets. And we look at that history. It's in Daniel's last vision. Um, so he's going to be, and I can't remember, we, we figured it out before, but it's going to be... Um, can't remember here which one it is. I'm just trying to find this quickly. I don't think it's the March 28th one, but it's around there. I know he's going to address the 252 um, and he deals with phi and stuff but I, I don't remember all the details but anyway it's in this period of time that Jeff is going to be presenting about the Levitical chiasm and that Levitical chiasm is extremely important as far as understanding uh, the failure of the prediction but if we're going to try to uh, characterize this March 27th date. I mean, we're, we're really looking at this 100 days of prayer. Now, what is this 100 days of prayer then telling us, telling this movement? What, what specifically is this movement trying to, uh, to understand about? I mean, because this is connected to the pandemic. We know that this pandemic was predicted by Jeff. That's going to be on January 14th, 2017, that he's going to take Paneum and connect it to the pandemic. 
and predict that a pandemic is going to happen between November 9th and July 18th. He doesn't say that, but he says between Raffia and Paneum. And we recognized at this time in this line that November 9th is Raffia and July 18, 2020 is Paneum. So the pandemic comes in that period of time. So now we got this March 27th and we have the 100 days of prayer. So how do we, so we can attach that to the 300. So this separation out of the movement. Now, the 300 are separated out how? How are they separated out from the 10,000? So by... Uh, taking the water up to their mouth, right? So they're, you have the one group that just puts their mouth down to the water like a dog. And then you have the other group, the 300, bring the water up to their mouths. And they're attentive to what's around them, right? So those 300 are then going to be chosen. So 9,700 are going to be uh sent back to their tents and the 300 are going to be involved in this battle. So how does this relate to what happened in the movement? Well, the, uh, the 9,700 was uh, connected as a symbol for September. For the ninth. Yes, yeah, sep uh, September 7th. Yes. Yeah, September 7th. So we have, um, so that September 7th, that's when Jeff wakes up and he exposes Parminder and Tess that they're false prophets, right? That's the battle of... Uh, not the battle of, but the rebellion of Baal Peor when Moses recognizes what's happening. So, so we can see that there is a group of people that are symbolically connected to what happened on September 7th. So we know that there are people who are in this movement on November 9th. They're with Jeff since September 7th saying we don't want time setting uh don't pick up this july 18th uh time setting date but jeff is going to anyway and so we're going to see that 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 symbol of from november 9th to march 27th is symbolizing those separated out okay now but we have the start of the 100 days of prayer so we could see the 144,000 minutes. So you, we would see prior to July 18th that this is symbolizing the 144,000. But I think primarily the, here it's it's dealing with the 40 years in the wilderness. But it, but it is a symbol of the 144,000. And we know that the way that I arrived with that 273 on November 9th is I used the 144,000 days of a back tune which is the Mayan, Mayan uh, uh, one back tunes 144,000 days. So it's also connected. So the 144,000 symbol connects us to the Mayan calendar. Okay. So we can get this from, again, from Judges chapter 7. So we got the 300 there and the 9,700. So what about this July 4th date? It's obviously the end of, 
100 days of prayer. It's the last day of those 100 days of prayer. But how did we connect this to the story of Gideon? Now, there's a lot that happens in chapter 7. Right? We know they have the separation of these people. And then we have um, uh, the direction that they're going to have as far as what they're going to do. They're going to have uh, these trumpets. And you're going to have these 300 men. You're going to have the, the host of Midian beneath in the valley. You're going to have uh, that night that um, God's going to speak to Gideon and tell him to go down to the host, to the camp. But if, if you're scared, bring somebody with you, Pura, thy servant, down uh, to the host. And Pura means foliage, so I guess he's going to hide behind him sort of thing. But... Um, and thou shalt hear what they shall say. Afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. So they go down, Purah his servant, or Fura, depends, yeah, it'd be Pura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. So they go up to the border of this camp, and they're going to overhear uh, this guy talking about a dream that he had. Right? So he's going to dream that this barley cake tumbles into uh, the host and and it's going to came unto a tent, smote it that it fell and overturned it, that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, this is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Josh, the man of, a man of Israel, for unto his hand hath God delivered Midian and all his hosts. So this guy interprets this dream and says it's Gideon. Um. So Gideon hears this dream and the interpretation, um, and he worships God, returns into the host of Israel, and says, God has delivered the Midianites into our hands. Right. <clears throat> and then he's going to take this, and he's going to divide these into three companies. Right. And these three companies then are going to go... Uh, you know, 100 each. So we have the 100 there, right? Um, and then they're going to blow these trumpets. And the blowing of the trumpets is going to be July 18th, right? When I blow a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side, and all the camp, and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So, so we're, what we primarily have here, after the dividing of the 300, from the 10,000, then you're going to have Gideon being spoken to, and he's going to go down to the camp and hear this dream and its interpretation. So how does this relate, or does it relate, uh, to what we see here on this line? Can we, can we in some way address this, um, does this dream address any of what we see here? Okay, what is July 4th? Okay, so it's Independence Day. Okay. What else is it?
Okay, it's the first day of the first month, right? We can see that with the 187 days. Now we can also see on this line, we have it connected to the siege of Washington. So that's the empowerment of the second angel is connected here to the empowerment of the first. So what else is July 4th? So it's Independence Day. It's the first day of the first month. It's a celebration, right? Americans celebrate Independence Day. I'm not, I know they have fireworks. Anything else? I mean, we know it's 13 days before July 18. Is it the first day of the seventh month? I mean, it's not really, but. Because the start of the civil new year in Israel is the Feast of Trumpets, right? You got Rosh Hashanah. Is, is it in some ways like Rosh Hashanah? I mean, people don't really blow trumpets on July 4th, but they do do fireworks. Is it announcing then the Day of Atonement, the judgment that's coming? Because if you think about, you know, July 18th, this is supposed to be an attack on Nashville. Now, it's not, but it is, right? as a symbol. As a symbol that will happen. Yeah. Okay. And we know that here they're going to defeat Midian, right? The Midianites. So that's what happens on July 18th. Because we're going to say July 18th, they, well, he says when I blow the trumpet, right? And and then, so Gideon with the hundred men that were with him in verse 19 came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. So we have here of uh, the middle watch. What is the middle watch? It's the middle, right? It's not exactly the middle of the night, but it's the beginning of the middle watch. And they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal. And they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp and all the host ran and cried and fled. So that's um, all from, you know, verse 18 to verse 21. So how do we connect this to July 4th, 2020? It's 
since this was the ending of the 100 days of prayer that the church had called, yeah, is this not for us a trumpet call that something was about to happen and that within four, you know, in the 14 days that that succeeded this that we needed to really pay attention to what was going on. Okay. Yeah. So, so we definitely need to, to pay attention, not just the church. Um, and then what's happening here. It's just frozen. Um, so we needed to pay attention to something that is this movement uh had to understand something. Um, let's see if I can find this here on my charts. Okay, so in in uh, American history, I mean, obviously, we have all the things that are connected with the Revolutionary War. But we also have things in the Civil War, right? And... Agreed. We have quite a bit out of the Civil War. Yeah. Now, in the Civil War, we have uh, the American Civil War starts April 12th, 1861. That happens to be the first day of the first month on the biblical calendar. And a hundred days later, on July 21st, 1861, is the Battle of Manassas, Manassas, sometimes called the First Battle of Bull Run. So it depends on the perspective, whether you're from the north or the south, what you name it. Um, now, July 21st, of course, is midnight. Now, so this 100 days uh, occurs in, in this line, and, and I'll show it to you. So there's, there's just some similarities here that we need to look at. So this is um, Ellen White's uh, Civil War visions, right? She's going to have uh, her first vision, January 12th, 1861. Um, and, and then 90 days later, uh, the war is going to begin on April 12th, 1861. hundred days after that is going to be the battle of Manassas on July 21st. And then she's going to have her second vision 13 days later. Does that look familiar? So can you see the 100 days and the 13 Yes, days? yeah. Okay. So we have the same thing here, right? We have 100 days, so that's 144,000 minutes, and 13 days, 18,720 minutes. And then August 3rd, 1861, Ellen White has her second vision. And in her second vision, she's shown the Battle of Manassas, Right? She shows, she's shown what happened and how an angel intervened. Okay. So I think this is relevant to this line. I'm not particularly sure how it all fits together, but we are in the middle of a civil war in the United States. And so these symbols of Ellen White's uh, Civil War visions. Um, Bull Run and Manassas, it, Iran says, if you take the normal sum, uh, it's 187. Okay, so that's pretty significant. So the Battle of Bull Run and the Battle of Manassas, you, you take the gematria of those, and it equals 187. Okay, so, so these are symbolizing this history. Now, we, we didn't know this. That is, 
And you'll see here that we also have the first day of the first month here, but of course that's going to be 9-11. That is, what I did is I took this line and I said, this is the time of the end, 1989. This is 9-11. This is midnight. July 21st is midnight. Midnight cry here is going to be 13 days later. And then you have 22 weeks to the Sunday law, 154 days. I'm just, that's how I drew out the line just to try to analyze it, what what symbols I thought were there. Is this chart on the palmoni.org website? Um, I don't know. Okay. Um, it is in my paper on in uh, academia on the Civil War, the American Civil War. Uh, this chart is there in that paper. So you can download the PDF off of my okay. academia site. Okay. Okay, so uh, but anyway, you can you can see that those symbols, those spans of time, are being represented here in connection with July Fourth, and July Fourth, of course, it has to do with America, right? So, so it has to do with this American Civil War that's going on now. In this context, we know that we talk about the pandemic, which is a type of the Sunday law. But we know we also have this civil war going on at the same time. So all I'm saying is that this July 4th date, it relates to American independence. It relates to the symbols of the 100 days and the 13 days um, with the Battle of Manassas as part of that. And, and so this message here has to do with the pandemic and the civil war. But in the Battle of Manassas, there's an angel that intervenes. Now, could we say that an angel intervened on July 18, 2020? That is, the event would have been fulfilled if this movement had been prepared for it. Because we're saying everything pointed to July 18th. But this movement was not ready for that event. If we had been ready, our prediction would have come true. Is that fair enough statement? Fair enough. Yeah. Now, God intervened out of his mercy so that warning just became a warning. It's a trumpet warning about what's going to happen. And so when we get to the July 18, the second angel arriving, we're going to have to look at that tomorrow. But I think we can see that this fits in with the story of Gideon. I don't think what we did here is some kind of you know, arbitrary choosing of dates. We did it because that's what's there, and that's what's in the story of Gideon as well. Okay, and then these other dates, they're, they're still going to relate to what's happening now um, in, in our movement, because this isn't really just about the Adventist church. There is a warning that's 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 given. But this is really about this movement. So these external events are relating to, to us. Okay, any final comments before we close with prayer? Okay, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study again this morning. And we pray that your angels can watch over each one. Keep us, we pray and bring us together again to study your word according to thy will. Help us throughout this day to contemplate these things and um, to do the work that you set before us each day faithfully. Thank you, Lord. Um, and uh, we pray and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.